Hello, guys and gals, lords and ladies, saints and sinners of every kind. Welcome to Rise Up Jerusalem, the Catholic podcast for teens. I'm your host, Conor McLaughlin, and this week we are actually going to talk about something that someone asked us to talk about. I love it when this happens when someone says, can you talk about this? Because I don't have to think about what to talk about. I just talk about that. Anyways, what we're going to talk about is I got a text from one of my friends and she said, hey, Connor, I was talking to my Protestant friend today about baptism. She doesn't believe that people receive the Holy Spirit through baptism, but rather that it's just a symbol, an outward profession of one's faith. I was wondering if you could maybe do a podcast on that from a biblical point of view. So this is interesting to reiterate, talking to a Protestant friend who does not believe that people actually receive the Holy Spirit through baptism. All right, so let's break this down. Let's 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 look at from biblical point of view because it's a Protestant friend and the catechism isn't really going to do us much help here because she's not Catholic. Let's look biblically at baptism. Let's look at what happened in the Gospels and all the New Testament and see what we can find because something something something's going to come up. It's going to really show us, hey, yeah, the Holy Spirit does actually come down to baptism. It's not just a sign. All right, so I think the first place that we should start is at the baptism of God. And by the baptism of God, I mean the baptism of Christ, because Christ is God, Trinity, you know, yeah, full divinity of Christ. Accept it. It's, it's teaching. Anyways, so if we look at the baptism, all right, the baptism of our Lord, what does it say happened? Let's specifically look at, um, let's look at Luke, all right? When John says, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I shall come, I am not even worried to untie the straps of sandals. He will baptize you with water and the Holy Spirit. All right? He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Are we done? Is the episode over? After like two minutes? No. There is more to this. Some people will actually say, I mean, this seems like really open and shut. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Many say that the idea of being baptized with the Holy Spirit is that symbol like my friend said that her friend was talking about, right? So it's like, oh, an outward sign. Maybe it's it's just it's just a symbol. The Holy Spirit is just a symbol. And the, you're, you're really just being saved by accepting that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you know? Protestants are weird. Like, they believe some stuff. Yeah, they believe stuff. It's true. They believe stuff. Anyway, <laughs> this could not be an open and shut case because they believe that maybe it's just a symbol. To that, I respond, let's look at Luke, all right? Luke at the baptism. I think it's like Luke 3.20. When they're talking about being baptized and Jesus was being baptized, and they said that when he was being baptized, the heaven was open and the Holy Spirit descended on him bodily in the form of a dove. And a voice came from heaven and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. The Holy Spirit descended on him bodily in the form of a dove. Again, it seems very, very simplistic. The Holy Spirit is coming into God at this. The Holy Spirit is coming to Christ at this moment. And some may say, well, that's just a symbol. The Holy Spirit didn't actually bodily come. Maybe there was just a dove around and the author, Luke, in this instance, just assumed that that was the Holy Spirit. Okay, fine. Let's, let's, let's go with that. Let's say that that's a good idea. Well. I would propose that we should start looking somewhere else than besides that one baptism. So where are other places that baptism occurs in the New Testament? Now, the biggest one and one of my favorites is in Acts of the Apostles where Peter, this is right after the, the Holy Spirit has descended upon Peter and the Apostles, right? And so Peter and the Apostles are were all in the upper room, Pentecost happened, and Peter goes out and says that they should repent and be baptized, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. And then he says, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Again, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Everywhere it mentions the baptism. It oftentimes mentions the Spirit. I mean, biblically, it makes a lot of sense that the Spirit actually comes into you. Now, I want to draw a little bit forward to the Catholic side of it. We believe that when baptism all right, when baptism happens, we become temples of the Holy Spirit, right? And so when we become temples of the Holy Spirit, I mean, it would make sense that the Holy Spirit would go into that temple. There is a catechistic thinking that when the Holy Spirit actually comes to you is in confirmation. That is extremely incorrect. According to the catechism, confirmation strengthens the gifts of the Holy Spirit in you. If you don't know what the gifts of the Holy Spirit are and all that such, watch the episode I did on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It was like two, three weeks ago. It was really good. I liked it. Of course, I liked it. It was my episode. So, like, the confirmation, when you get confirmed, 
it's not just like bringing the Holy Spirit into the temple that was made when you were baptized. It's strengthening the Holy Spirit in you. And for something to have been strengthened, the Holy Spirit would have to be in you originally. Where is the easiest place for that to come? Well, according to the Bible, when Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit came down. When Peter, after he had received Pentecost, he said, repent and believe in the gospel, the Holy Sp- he said, the Holy Spirit will descend upon you. Now, could the Holy Sp- could it just mean, well, the Holy Spirit is the symbol. It really just does mean the repentance. I don't think so, because the Holy Spirit, the idea, you have to remember, the Holy Spirit is often viewed as like the mystical side of like the, the char- charismatic side that, you, you know, you you're given like the God is is the father. Jesus is the brother and the savior. And the Holy Spirit is kind of like the one who like helps you out. I mean, the Holy Spirit, being a temple of the Holy Spirit means being a temple of God. And having the Holy Spirit come and strengthen you in confirmation means it strengthens you to be better. Becoming a full adult in the church as in confirmation is when the Holy Spirit strengthens you, gives you the inner dispositions you need to be able to live a life as a Catholic adult. Again, though, you need to have the Holy Spirit already inside of you to strengthen it. And it's going to come to baptism. Because let's look at the other two sacraments. Confession, not everyone celebrates confession, the Catholic Church only. There are people who don't like, maybe maybe some others do. I'm pretty sure it's only the Catholic Church that does confession in any way, shape, or form. All right, so most Protestants aren't going to agree with confession. How about the Eucharist? Well, those Protestant churches that do have the Eucharist, they don't believe, again, again, they don't believe that it's actually the body and blood of Christ. They believe that it is a symbol So in response to the question posed by my friend, what would I say to that person who believes it's not a symbol? Well, I would say that Jesus was, when Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit came down. And when the Holy Spirit came down, it came down. Like it it was there. And Peter said, be baptized and the Holy Spirit shall fill you. So obviously the Holy Spirit is actually going to come. And the idea of water in that is the symbol of the Holy Spirit. It's reminiscent of how Jesus was baptized in the Jordan. So yeah, that answers the question of, does the Holy Spirit actually come down to baptism? Yeah, the Holy Spirit isn't just a symbol saying, oh, you'll baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't just mean, oh, you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior now. The Holy Spirit actually does come into you at baptism. The original sin goes away. The Holy Spirit is able to come in. And now infant birth, that's an entire another topic that we can get to in another day because I need material. <laughs> Guys, remember, I did this episode because someone asked. So if you have a question that you want me to talk about, email me at riseupjerusalem at gmail.com. Tweet me at riseupjerusalem. Respond on the comments. Do one of those. I don't know. Just as long as you can get your question answered. That's what matters. And guys, don't forget to tell.